So it's time for a new series. And this series, I'm going to build upon what I was talking about in uh, the vlog last week about my card making uh, evolution or de-evolution because I don't really do card making that much anymore. But I thought I'd pulled out some things that I have in my stash and uh, use those as inspiration for creating a type of uh, uh, interactive card, if I would, if if I say so. Um, so, but before I do that, let me talk about something that I've already talked about before, but in a little bit more detail. And that's Heartfelt Creations. This is a company in the States that creates, um, well, they're famous mostly for uh, creating flowers. They have a series of dies and rubber stamps and uh, tools to create dimensional flowers. And you can really get hooked on this. And I did at one time, and I bought a lot of Heartfelt dies and uh, rubber stamps and things like that. Um, but I grew away from that as time went on, and quite frankly, the company has not come out with anything that's really all that new and exciting in quite a while. It's all a variation on a theme. It's all very lovely, I will tell you that, and there are many people that uh, will buy complete sets of anything that's new, any of their new products that come out. I know that when I used to work at the uh, scrapbooking store, there were standing orders for the complete um, new release of any of the Heartfelt uh, Creations products. And those new releases usually ran in around about two or three hundred dollars. So it's also not a inexpensive uh, crafting series. So I did collect some of their things. Um, they have paper pads. And the paper pads were kind of neat because they're very, they're very pretty, for one thing. And on top of it all, you can, um, they have a lot of background papers and they have actual card faces as well and you can use a paper pack to make some really nice cards all the elements are here and the idea of this system is they come out with matching dies and rubber stamps and inks uh, that go along with their paper packs um, so this is great if you're a card maker or even for scrapbooking if you want to keep everything in a theme um, you don't want to have to mix and match your colors on your own. It's, everything in these packages coordinates. I only have a couple of these packages and I haven't really used them all that much um, because as I said, these are geared more towards card making and I'm not really a card maker. And then of course they came out with um, these albums which is what I did in my last series I showed you uh, and talked a little bit about those uh, types of albums where they already have various uh, pages for them already made for you you just have to put them all together um, but they also have come out with interactive cards or fold out cards whatever you want to call them and they have different packages of these so for example this package is showing you the type of card that opens up in layers um, similar this one as well now on the back they show you the various pieces that go into it um, this is another type of fold out card that has sort of a cut out window in it um, and layers so kind of cool kind of like making a little album only with just less pages. Um, now, have I done much with these? No. In fact, the packages are still sealed. I just thought they were kind of cool. Um, but I, as I said, I'm not really turned on by card making. But this might turn me on. Because what I'm going to do in this series is I'm actually going to take one of these kits and make a card. Now, I'll show you what I've got in mind. So, they came out recently with, um, I would call them a tunnel book. They're calling them an oval card, a layered oval card. And it has these pieces in the kit. And this is what it looks like when you take it out of the package. You have this back piece, which has already pre-scored hinges, or spines. And the idea with these is, you take these pages and you glue them or adhere them to each one of these. Now, of course, these aren't going to stay in, and I've got them out of order. You go from the smallest to 
the largest. And this is basically the principle of what's called a tunnel book. And the idea is each page builds on the page before as you flip through it. So let me just see here. Of course, I don't have these glued in yet, but you see the idea? I don't know how well that shows up, but you have these holes and they get progressively smaller. And you have pieces, I'll show you a picture here, that overlay each one. So it's like a layer. That's why they call it a layered oval card. Um, if you look up tunnel books on YouTube, you'll find lots of videos where people make these kind of things. They're kind of kind of cute um, and there's something a little different. And I've always wanted to make a tunnel book, but I've never ever gotten around to it. So this is going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to make an interactive card and I'm going to essentially use the principles of making a tunnel book. So these are going to be my foundation pieces, which I'm going to add paper to. Now, I only have two pads of the Heartfelt Creations paper, and they're very flowery. Um, they're very pretty, but I want something that is a little bit more my style. And so I've gone to my Graphic 45 pads, which you know I have a lot of, and this is what I'm going to use as my inspiration and my elements in the card. This particular package I have never used. It's called Cafe Parisian and it's got this French theme to it and I just love this first page. All these elements. I mean this on its own could be a page but I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to fussy cut out of this some of these elements to you know make my layers in my my card. Um, but I'll just flip you through this because this is what's giving me inspiration here. So of course they're double-sided pages, so you have you know some here and that. You know, turn it sideways. And you get two of each sheet. The colors are kind of interesting as well. Um, they have these little cutouts, cutaways, whatever you want to call them. There's some text things, so I think I could include some of that. And it's just really nice. But when we get near the back, well, there's pieces here that you could fussy cut as well. Um, I'm looking at this. Some borders. More fussy cut. Things like that. And then we have here at the back a couple of pages with these cards, like for journaling or something like that. So basically what I'm proposing to do is create sort of a mini album, but one that could be used as a card, as a special card for someone. Now, I have never made one of these before, so I'm not sure how this process is going to go. In my last series, you know that I actually scanned in the elements. Um, I'm not going to do that with this one. Um, these are relatively inexpensive to buy, and um, I think the time it would take me to actually scan these, get my Cricut Maker to cut them out and that kind of thing is not really worth the effort. So I'm going to use what came in the package and make this what I'm now going to call a tunnel card. And so I will come back and show you the very beginnings of this when I get started. Okay, so what I've done now is I took that very first page that I showed you. I'll show it to you again. This one right here and I cut out all the elements that are there and there wasn't a lot of waste left over and in fact some of the pieces that would have been waste I've cut as well because they might serve as border pieces or other embellishments. So I have all of these and I'm going to use these as the basis for what's going to go onto each page of this tunnel card. I am now calling it a tunnel card. But I do have other elements. I will need other elements. I'm going to need some background papers uh, for this um, as well. And I have to make a decision as to what my focal image is going to be. Because you move from larger to smaller. And the center part here is the end of the story, so to speak. Um, so I have to decide where these will go on the pages, how I'm going to do the pages, and all of that yet. And that's going to take a little bit of thought. Also, I am not going to assemble this book or this card until I have each of these pages finished. And I just realized something. I'm going to have a front and a back.
on each one of these as well. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to decide on my background papers and I'm going to cover the front and the back of each one of these before I start mounting these cutouts onto it. And that's what I'll do in the next segment. So stay tuned, that'll be next week. So now is the time to cover the actual pages. And I have the first page here. Now there's a couple of ways you could do this. I want to put decorative paper onto both sides of this. And you could simply cut out your card shape uh, using your paper cutter on your decorative paper. Uh, it measures five by seven in this case. But if I want a little bit of a border, I would reduce that by a quarter of an inch. So instead of five by seven, it would be four 0.75 by 6.75 or four and three quarters by six and three quarters um, and that would give me a nice border along the outside that's easy but the tricky part is this oval in the center cutting out your piece so it matches that exactly or even more complicated cutting it out so that you have a nice little eighth of an inch or so border around here so the black would show in other words give it a nice framing um, yes you can do this by hand you could draw it out uh, make a template that kind of thing what I decided to do instead was to recreate this actual shape on my Cricut Maker and then for each page from there they each reduce in size the oval the page itself stays the same size I just need to make uh, half inch increment adjustments on the size of the on the height and on the width of my oval and that works out really well the other advantage of doing it on the Cricut Maker is after I have it done I can save it and I can use this again over and over to create future uh, tunnel cards or even tunnel books so that's what I did I created my uh, template on my Cricut Maker and then it was just a simple matter of selecting my decorative paper putting it into the Cricut Maker and it cut it out for me and that's what I have right here so now I need to adhere it to this uh, foundation piece and that's easy enough now this is going to be the side I want to show up so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to grab my quarter inch two-sided tape you could use glue again you got to be careful with your glues though because your glues certain kinds of them will cause your cardstock to warp and I think in a project like this especially you don't want any warpage since you have a layer you're building layers upon layers here so I'm just putting down my double-sided tape and I'm just putting it close to the edge all the way around that's all that's really needed for this and I am going to varnish it with my bone folder. As I said before, this helps the tape to adhere well to the cardstock. And then I'm going to take off the protective backing. And I just use my paper piercer for this. Your fingernails, if they're long enough, can work as well with this. And now it's just a simple matter of centering it. And the way I center it is I'm not really looking at the edges of the card. I'm going to try and center it around the oval so that I have equal amount, roughly equal amount around each side. I'm just eyeballing it. And that's okay because even if it's off by a little bit, it's not going to make any difference because we're going to be layering pieces on this. So there you go. I have that side done and I'd already have done the back side. So let's get the whole I've done all the other pages as well so let's take a look at the whole thing now of course I do not have any of these pages yet adhered to my hinges over here and I'm not going to do that until I start layering my little cutout pieces but you can see here you get an idea of what this is going to look like and then of course on the last page if I can get this up here on the last page I just have a four by three quarters no sorry a four and three quarters by six and three quarters card and I cut two of those out one for the very back and one for the back of the card itself now I do have a spine piece on here but I think I'll wait until um, later to actually put something on that um, so there I have the basic foundation 
of my tunnel card uh, done. Flip it over this way. And you'll see too here, it sort of gives it more depth by leaving a bit of a black border around each of those ovals because it looks more like a shadow effect. And I think it will just give it depth when these are adhered to the hinges. So the next thing we need to do is start building the layers of each page. So now it's time to add the little uh, fancy cutouts that I did, or the fussy cutouts that I did from the scrapbook pad. Um, and lay those on each one of these pages. And I've already done a preliminary layout. Actually, I've done a little bit more than a preliminary layout. I've got my elements adhered on each of my pages except for the top one. And I'm gonna come back to this in a minute to show you the procedure for this. Um, so here we have each of the layers. I have not yet assembled, uh, glued these or adhered them to the um, spine of the book in here. We'll do that in a few minutes. I'm just laying these out in the order they'll appear, and this is the last page. So what I did was I did a combination of shadowing with some black ink around each one of the cutout elements, and some of the elements I have also popped up with some dimensional squares, these kind of little things right here, um, just to give it another uh, bit more of a layered look, dimensional layered look. So let's take the very first page of this, and I'm going to use these two elements that I cut out for this. So first thing I want to do is take some black ink and I'm using an archival ink, one that is waterproof so that it won't come off once it's dry. And I'm just going around lightly the edges of the cutout. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want these elements to pop out from the background a little bit more. And that's the same thing that I'm doing with the little dimensional squares as well, because I want them to pop up. And we'll do this little element as well. Now I picked this particular little element to serve uh, as not just a decorative piece, but also as a bit of a sort of a title or headline for this particular card, Cafe Parisienne. Now, this card is sort of generic because right now there's nothing in this uh, that would say it's for a birthday or anniversary or anything like that. But that could be personalized later. Um, so I've got these two pieces shadowed. Now I want to put them on here. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to glue this flat so that it is coming right across the base of the opening because that's the whole idea of the tunnel card, is that you can see hints of what's on each layer um, when the card is closed. So I'm just going to glue that flat, and I'm going to use my favorite glue of the moment, which is Gorilla Glue Clear. It's a super glue, and it holds everything well, and it doesn't really warp my paper, and it dries extremely fast. So, get that positioned. Now, because I'm using this kind of glue, this is what it looks like, Gorilla Glue, um, I don't have to worry about making sure that it's secured on all sides. A little glue easing out there. I'm just going to take that off. Um, because it's going to hold it down. And I may put a little bit right on here, I think. And if it oozes out a little bit while it's still wet, I just take a baby wipe and lightly blot it up. But it does dry clear. Now the umbrella piece, I want to lay it across the opening here. But I do want to... And I don't care if it hangs off over the edge over here. It just gives it another dimensional look. Um, but I want to pop it up. So I'm going to use some of my three-dimensional squares around the edges of this. And these are pretty strong in terms of their holding ability. Let's make sure I don't have any of these popping out from behind. Uh, I will on that one, so let's pull that one off. And uh, I'll stick it up here. And put a few in around here. And let's just see. Will that be enough to pop it up? 
maybe one, there's one there, maybe one here in the center. Okay, so I've got those on there. Now, one thing I forgot to do, but I'm not going to worry about it, is I should have added a little drop of the Gorilla Glue to the bottom of each one of these sticky pads, even though these already have sticky on the back of them. It's just an extra level of security to make sure they do not drop off over time because that can happen with dimensional squares or pop dots. Um, over time, they can dry out and start dropping off. But I'm not going to worry about it today because really I'm doing this more or less as a demo. Okay, I'm just putting a little drop of Gorilla Glue on each one of those pads. And there we go. So this is a little bit more dimensional and ah, see that? I made a mistake. I have one hanging out there. I do not want that hanging out there. Just as well I didn't put any crazy glue or any of this uh, Gorilla Glue on the back of that because I might not have been able to get that off. Okay, so all of those elements are now together. So, the next part is to assemble the card itself, to put the hinges on. And to do that, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. So I need to find that, and I'll come right... Okay, so what I've done now is I have added a few additional pieces of embellishments here. I added some bling pieces that I have collected over time from various places, some costume jewelry that I've cut up uh, that I bought at a charity shop. And I also went in my stash and I found some flowers that I had made some time ago. These are heartfelt creation flowers. Um, they weren't doing anything and so I thought the colors went fine with this so I added those as well for another dimensional element and I added since this is my first page in the tunnel card I've added this little Tim Holtz uh, word chip that says love this life which is kind of generic because you could if you're going to give this to somebody as a card um, this would work for almost any occasion um, so I did that and also, I just moved these up here out of the way for a minute. I added another embellishment here. This was actually a type of button. I cut off the shank and popped it up. Um, and on the back page of this, I added a pocket. Uh, paper I cut down from the pad and I added a couple of these cutouts that were also included in the pad. And so on these, these could be for little pictures or they could be just for a personal note that the sender might want to uh, give. Um, it's all up there, but I just thought it was an additional uh, element. I also added a spine cover piece here on the back and also went around the edges of that with uh, black ink. And I have now prepared my hinges and I've put a piece of half inch double sided tape on each one of the hinge flaps and these will adhere my pages. So that's what we're going to do now. Now one thing I'm a little concerned about is the fact that I've made my elements 3D. They're raised up in some of these cases. Now I think there's going to be enough space because each of these flaps is about half an inch or so. Um, I think there'll be enough space. But if it gets a little chunky and, and a little bit wider, that's okay. I think it'll just add to the overall aesthetic of this. So I'm going to put on my second last page, if you count this one as a page. And we want to be careful lining this up. And this is a little awkward, as you can see. I'm thinking if I put it right in here in the crease, line it up. Sorry if my head's in the way or not. Okay, that seems to work pretty good. Now I just noticed something. By doing this, um, I see this black part that's here. And you'll notice I am not putting anything on the back of these pages. Those could be embellished as well. That's up to the individual. Um, I might put a little piece of washi tape down along the inside of that. We'll just see. But let's get these other pages on as well. And I want to keep them straight and in the right order. 
Okay, just checking that one that I didn't put the cover on the wrong page. I know it's very difficult for you to see this on camera, but I am lining it up with those seams, or seams, the, the flaps. Okay, so far so good. Let's get the second page of the album in. Now the problem with working with double-sided tape when you do this is you do not have any wiggle room. Once this is stuck, it is stuck for the most part. You might be lucky to be able to peel it off, but best not to have to test that theory. Okay, and our last page, which is our cover page. And this one might be the trickiest of them all. My hands are not that steady. Okay, got it. All right. Let's just bend it over. And there we go. We have finished our album. Or have we? I never, I can never stop when it comes to embellishing. So, um, but just before I do something, I think I'm going to try a little Wink Stella in some parts of this. But before I do that, I'm just going to show this to you close. You see, you can see through the hole. Now, you might not want to cover the holes up as much as I have. But as you see, each one becomes a layer. Little surprise behind each page. I think that's turning out pretty nice. So, do I want to add some Wink of Stella? I think I do. Do I have... Now, if you don't know what Wink of Stella is, it comes in these water brush-like pens. I'm giving it a good shake. I haven't used this one for a while. And you just brush it on. Now, I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper here just to get things flowing. Yep, there's some there. And all it does is add a subtle hint of shimmer to whatever you put it on. And I like to use it as a finishing touch. And put a little on my flowers. It's just to make them, when the light hits it, give them a nice little glow, a little sparkle. And this dries extremely quickly. And you don't have to cover the entire surface, just enough to give it a little bit of sparkle. See the sparkle? See if the lights on that. A little bling is a nice thing. Oh, that rhymes. Now, I'm just going to look here and see if there's another flower. I think this flower should have a little sparkle because it just makes them stand out a little bit more. And as I said, the Wink of Stella does come in other colors as well, but primarily the clear one seems to be the best-selling one. I know when I worked for the uh, scrapbooking store and we had these in stock, we couldn't keep them in stock. Everybody wanted them. And they are great. And very easy to use, as you can see. Occasionally I shake it just to make sure I'm getting some of the stuff down inside. Now one little tip, when you get low, don't throw it out, unscrew it, add a little bit of water and you'll still get some more shimmer that's stuck on the insides of the barrel. And there. I think we've got it. So let's just move some things out of our way here and take another look. So here we have it. And um, I don't know if I can move my camera in a little bit without losing focus. Does that make any difference? Well, pulls it in a little bit. 
hope it's still in focus here. But there you have it. Now, it does look more like an album than a card, and it could be an album. Mind you, with these holes that are cut into it, it doesn't give you a lot of space for things like pictures and things like that. But as a card, I think it's very, very unique. Of course, now, if you want to send this in the mail, it's going to cost you, because this is pretty thick. See, there are my pages. Um, might be better to hand deliver it, or put it in a box and ship it that way, uh, so things don't get crushed if you're going that 3D element look. It could be flatter. You don't need to add all the 3D embellishments that I've added to it. But there you have it. And um, as I said, these pages could be embellished as well. I'm not going to bother. Oh, one thing I did suggest was a little washi tape down the sides of those seams. So let me come back in just okay. a second. Okay, I went and I added a little bit of washi tape to these spine pieces in here just to break them up. They were looking kind of stark, just in plain black. So I just put some washi tape down here. You may want to use a little glue with the washi tape. I didn't. These ones were fairly sticky, but sometimes washi tapes have a tendency to peel off because they're not that sticky. It depends on what you've got as washi tape. So here's the final card. I think it looks pretty good. Let's just take a look at it one more time. So you can see that you get a little peekaboo. Maybe they should call it a peekaboo card. Um, through each window, in each layer. So anticipation of something on the next page that's a little bit different. And then the ending. Now at the end of this, you might want to add a card here with a sentiment to it or a personal message if you're giving it to somebody on a special occasion, whatever. And of course we have the spine done. And we have a little pocket on the back with two extra cards in it. And so there we have it, a little tunnel card. So I hope you enjoyed this series. The next series, we're going to tackle this, the fo Photo Folio Scrapbook. I have no idea what this is like. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. It's by iCraft, the same company that I used to make the, uh, uh, the album before this one. And it shows you on the back the pieces that are involved, and it gives you a sneak peek at how this all opens up in the flat. So this looks kind of exciting. It kind of reminds me of the Tim Holtz portfolio, which I showed um, earlier in my series on my art evolution. So, can't wait to get started on this, but this will take a few weeks yet because we're off to Australia, as you know, so I won't be able to get to this until we come back from then. Okay, we'll see you for this. Bye-bye.